Hello, welcome to this lesson of engineering mechanics, statics, and what we're going to do in this lesson is begin to talk about vectors. Vectors are going to be your friend. We're going to be using vectors throughout the remainder of this entire course and pretty much into every single problem that you will deal with in statics or in dynamics. Vectors are going to be such a part of your life from here going forward that we really need to make sure we have a good grasp of what vectors are and how to use them. So what we're going to do in this section is, is kind of compare and contrast vectors with scalars. And I think that most everyone watching this probably has a decent idea of what that means, but we'll talk a little more detail about that here. And then we'll talk about how to add vectors graphically, or how to do it graphically, because even though we don't use the graphical methods for every single problem that we come across, a lot of times when you have a mechanical system, it's very helpful to redraw everything in terms of a vector diagram and use graphical methods and uh, you know some of the law of cosines and law of sines and some of the trigonometry that we know in order to arrive at the solution. So just keep the big picture in mind. We're going to talk about vectors and scalars and then we're going to talk about how to add these vectors together because in many cases that's what you end up needing to do to solve mechanics problems. So um, we're not going to write lengthy definitions here, but just to refresh your memory, the concept of a scalar is something that everybody watching this knows about, whether they realize it or not. It's a number that represents magnitude only. So examples of a scalar might be temperature and pressure, right? Uh, there are many, many, many other uh, quantities that you could pull, pull out of uh, uh, thin air to describe what a scalar is or what scalar would represent. But a scalar is a number that doesn't really have any associated direction. So for instance, the temperature at this point, in, in, at the tip of my finger, the temperature at this point might be, you know, uh, 97.3 degrees, right? The temperature at this point might be 97.2 degrees. The temperature at this point might be 97.1 degrees. Right, so each point in space is going to have a slightly different temperature, right? Because the, the room is never going to be completely uniform in temperature, all right? But there's no real direction to the temperature. Whenever I say the temperature is 95 degrees and the tip of my finger, I don't really necessarily mean that it's pointing this way or pointing this way or pointing this way or pointing this way. Temperature doesn't have a direction. It's just a number that we associate with a point in space. The same with pressure. If we go underwater, and you start feeling your ears getting pushed on because of the pressure going under the water. Um, yes, it's pushing in on your ears, but really the pressure at a specific point is just a number representing how much force is kind of pushing, and that force is really pushing from all directions. So there's really no, no direction that that pressure acts in. It's a number that we use to express the pressure at that point, but it's not really pointed this way or pointed that way. Pressure is a number that's sort of independent of direction. So you may go down deeper in the ocean and have a higher pressure. You may go uh, to the top of the ocean, have a lower pressure. You might shoot yourself in a rocket to the high edges of the atmosphere and have a super, super low pressure. But the pressure, the number is all that matters. The direction, uh, uh, th that thing, is, is doesn't really matter at all. There's no direction associated with pressure. Now, contrast that with the concept of a vector. Vector is a quantity that has magnitude and direction. So it's easy to tell a vector from a scalar because in the vector we have clear indications of some kind of direction. For instance, velocity. You know, we're, we're driving down the road, we're going 37 kilometers per hour, and we're going east. You have to specify when you're talking about a velocity. Now don't, confu 